Today Networking podcast promotes entrepreneurs, startups, authors, business experts throughout the world, available on all ma- major podcast platforms. I'm Tom Riach, an American known as the king of networking, connecting people and speaking from my studio in Vinhedo, São Paulo, Brazil. And today we talk with Pamela Brinker. She's joining us from Colorado Springs, Colorado in the United States. Pamela Brinker is an author with over 30 years of experience as a psychotherapist. Her book, Conscious Bravery, Caring for Someone with Addiction, teaches readers how to train in bravery. With solid concepts, tools, and practices, readers learn then use bravery practices that work. Pamela, you promote addiction and mental health awareness. Is asking someone to be brave easier said than done? I am so happy to talk with you today, Tom, so thank you. And yes, we are all born with the seeds of bravery, but consciously growing them is required for skill building in conscious bravery training. So when we care about someone who struggles in the wilderness of addiction and mental health challenges, we, we parents and loved ones struggle too and lose hope at times. And that's what this book is about. Conscious bravery is about regaining our hope through our awareness and our action, the primary things that we can control. So we can make a difference in the lives of those who struggle with addiction, but we start with ourselves. And many (laughs) times the the call to someone who who is addicted, that comes suddenly, that people don't sort of dwell into that. It can come as a surprise. Absolutely. And the shock and overwhelm we parents and those who care about someone with addiction and mental health can be devastating. And so we, our bravery has to become instinctual. And we develop those skills with some anchors in bravery training. And I teach what those anchors are in this book about conscious bravery. You know, we befriend all of our feelings, not just the happy ones, we befriend all of our feelings, even our fears and our devastations. And we do conscious breathing. We view fear as one of our- Conscious breathing. Conscious breathing, yes. Instead of just taking three deep breaths, Uh which anyone can do, we breathe consciously in and out. We tune into our whole being. We tune into what's happening in our hearts, what's happening in our bodies, what's happening in our intuition, what our intuition is telling us what our soul is telling us, what the energy around us is telling us. That's what I teach it in a chapter called Whole Being Awareness. So that gives us time really to see ourselves, to hear ourselves, to feel ourselves. Beautiful. You've got it. And that's what I hope anyone I teach or anyone who reads this book will get. We have to tune into ourselves first to know what to do to help in any challenging situation or any crisis. Well, unfortunately, I've seen that in crisis, we turn on the reaction mode. Uh, yeah. and, and many times we just come up with a solution and we're not really sure what the problem is. You've got it. Yes. Yeah, so we have to, we parents and loved ones who care about someone with addiction have to consciously learn tools and they want, they, we need them to become embedded in our beings so that we can calm ourselves down, think clearly, get out of the, the, um, the primate brain and Mm -hmm. get into our prefrontal lobes to be able to make clear conscious choices about what to do to help or not to pause and relax and wait, see what happens or to spring into action. And as parents or as friends of persons who are addicted, this is a, a multicultural thing. This is everywhere in the world. This is not in one place. It it's, we are amidst, a challenging and even horrible drug and mental health crisis all over the world. And it's devastating. There, every day in the news, you see that people are dying from overdoses and they're taking their own lives. And so we've got to learn how to respond as a culture, as individuals and collectively. And so that's another uh, chapter in my book that we've got to become more comfortable with asking for help. to turn to one another with authentic connection and to rely on something more than ourselves to to God, to the universe, but not just that. That's only one solution. We've got to have it inside of us. So we have to know ourselves so well that we know, okay, this is the time in in a situation where I'm tempted to react, as you were saying. 
But instead, right now, I'm going to consciously make a choice and look at all of my options and reset. Because many times we don't even see when you talk about mental health and mental health awareness. Many times addiction starts with the situation with a, a health uh, situation that people have. That maybe our Absolutely. loved ones, you know, they, they have a situation. Then they may be on drugs and they may be on a prescription. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe legal drugs. Mm -hmm. uh, that can take them farther towards the road of addiction. And so we, we're not really sure where this all starts. You're right. We don't know what comes first, the chicken or the egg, in many situations. No one wants to become addicted. No one wants to be an addict and have their lives have this roller coaster of ups and downs from crises and to devastations to homelessness. But I've been in the trenches. I have two sons of my own who both struggled with huge mental health challenges and addiction to methamphetamines and other drugs. And so I know what it's like for our loved ones and those we care about to want solutions, but not be able to find them. Right. And so that's why it's so important for us, for us as individuals and collectively to form tribes and teams and turn to one another and resource answers so that we can help walk alongside our loved ones in the wilderness because we're in that wilderness with them. They're not alone. That's right. It's a general confusion. So your yes. book is it's sort of a handbook to parents or to loved ones wanting to help their loved ones. Yes, it's basically a handbook, a guide. It's It's a shining light to give answers to what do we need to do to take care of ourselves to help those we care about in the wilderness of addiction? Well, very when good, very good, Pamela. Unfortunately, we're coming to the end of our time. I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you for what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> thank because you. the steps that you've taken are show bravery. Mm. Well, thank you. It's an honor to walk alongside my loved ones and to help others along their paths. I'm sure everybody's going to really learn and be able to apply and, and take things forward and be a better world out there. Yes, we can plan on that and hope for it. <laughs> yeah. So for our listeners, you can find more information about Pamela Brinker. That's Pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A, -E the last name Brinker, B-R-I-N-K-E-R. -E You'll find her on LinkedIn and information about conscious bravery on her site, which is www.bebrave.us, as well as on Amazon. Cafe Networking is brought to us by Focus MI Market Intelligence, an agricultural market research specialist in Brazil. More information on their website, www.focusmi.com. Thanks for listening. Until the next time here at Cafe and Networking Podcast. <music>